this will not linger? What is it about the makeup of this team and the leadership that makes you believe that? Well, it's just that. J.R. Reed, Andre Smith, Jake, Andrew Thomas, and these guys are phenomenal leaders, great kids. Um, but we've got to do a good job of moving forward and understand we have to get better. We have to get better. We've got to be able to uh, get the ball in space, be able to make some plays with some guys, be able to block people up front. You know, everybody wants to talk about our offensive line being a dominant offensive line. I love to talk about that, but, I, but they got to do it. We got to go out there and do it and occupy the line of scrimmage and win the line of scrimmage over and over. And in this league, it's tough to do that all the time because they got good players too. Those front players they got up there, they got good players. You guys were rolling guys in and out on the offensive line. Was that because of injuries or just trying to find that right mix? No, we had some guys banged up. I mean, Sally was banged up, Ben was banged up. We had several guys in there banged up. How concerning was it on some of those sacks that Jake took? It seemed like the receivers couldn't get separation from their guys. Yeah, they did a great job. You had to say one thing that, that they did well. They got their hands on our guys, and there was not a lot of vertical separation. You know, and then there was a couple of those that were frustrating. They played man to man. They pressed. They pressed George. They pressed Tyler. They pressed Lawrence. They pressed Cager. And you know, they got two good corners that are really long. We do that all week. So you know, the idea was to try to get them on the move. Um, to get people off of you, you have to get in bunches and do some different things. And we did a lot of those things to get them off of us, but they did. They did a nice job. A couple of those picks were because they were just all over us. Oh, At that time, what was the uh, mood of the team <coughs> message to them? The mood of the team was, was good. They felt like we were going to win the game in the fourth quarter. You know, it's always a four quarter game in the SEC, very similar to the last week when we started talking about, hey, we got to go out and play better, execute, adjust, and do things. They were in. Uh, they were in good spirits. My, my message was make it a four quarter game. Win the game in the fourth quarter with physicality and build on this program for what it is. And we didn't do that. We didn't, we didn't dominate the fourth quarter. Um, so in terms of the offense, as you see about the line of scrimmage and, and other separation, you know, we're able to get you know, that kind of um, uh, affect things in terms of opening it up, getting, getting more deep opportunities in the passing game. Well, we call a lot of deep opportunities, but they're not there if they're getting pressed or at the line. You know what I mean? I mean there's, there were several deep balls thrown. If you notice, there was no space. You know what I mean? They were going on the sideline. They were out of bounds. They were, they were getting wired. And uh, you got to do a good job winning one-on-one. -on -one. And when the pass pro's there and you give Jake time, he's very accurate. But we got to get guys that can win one-on-one -on -one as well. Kirby, uh, were, you, were you at all concerned about the same I'm sorry to get into. I counted nine times in regulation. You ran the first time and then ran it again on second time. Um, is that putting Jake in a, in a kind of an unfair position to just say that was out? I don't think so. I think uh, you try to play to your strengths, and um, we've opened up some series of empty with, with, with passes, and it's hard when you play behind the sticks on second 10 as well. It's really tough when you get first down and you, you know, everybody can say, well, don't go run the ball when you're getting four yards. We consider that a pretty successful play. And there were some times we ended up second nine, second ten, but there were more times we ended up second six and second five. And you've already made it where it's second down, you've got the option to do what you want when the defense is on the defenses. Uh, but I certainly think that there were times we opened it up, we opened up some drives where we said, hey, we got to come out there and open it up and take a shot. And we did that a couple times, but we're, you're not successful there. It's easy to come back and say, hey, well, why do you run it on first? Why do you run on second? Well, if you've got the strength of your team, it's your backs and you feel like your backs can make guys miss and the strength of your team is your offensive line, you try to rely on your strength. Once they negate that and you're not able to, to move them up front, then you got to try other things. And I thought that we tried to do both of those. We opened it up, threw it to George over the middle time, took a shot coming out, uh, trying to do those things on principle. Kirby, I know Tyler had a nice uh, play on the line of scrimmage there. What, what about getting to the quarterback um, for your team as pass rush today? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. There's a couple times we, we got to him, he got loose. You know, we couldn't finish, especially on the, the second kid that came in. You know, the first kid I knew all week. He's got a ability to get the ball out really quick. He's got a great release. He doesn't take sacks. I mean, he's not gonna sit back there and just let you hit him. He's gonna throw the ball away and get rid of it quick. And he did that early in the game. The other kid came in. And we got pressure several times, especially late when they were in empty. But he's a he's, he's a really athletic kid. And when you have kids like that, it's very similar to Notre Dame. You you get pressure and affect him. He's taking off running, and sometimes those 300 pounders, 200 pounders that are rushing him, can't get him on the ground. So we had several chances to get them behind the sticks, and we couldn't do it because he, you know, he, he just made it enough to make it manageable. You know, he didn't get the, the long yarded situation. Coach, uh, everything's kind of exaggerated nowadays. You do the law 
also your number three ranking. Everybody thinks you know, sure. Sure. what was the message? Uh, you obviously know, got more games to play, and you're in the heat of it right now. Yeah, the message is we're a team. We stay together. When things get thick, we come together even better. It doesn't. The outcome of this game affects everybody outside of our building, inside of our building. We just get tighter and we go get better. And that's what we need. We need to grow and get better. We got to improve. So the outside world's going to say what they're going to say regardless anyway. We don't control that message. What we control is that our players believe, our players believe in each other, and we got to help them get better as a coaching staff. Kirby, uh, pretty much universally talking to the players that felt like they just got outplayed. You said that yourself. Any indication that was coming? Any kind of, you know, sometimes you know, sometimes you don't, but any indication that was coming? No, I thought we had a good week of practice. I thought we had good uh, practice prep. Uh, I thought we might be a little bit, you know, tired, but we, we, we went a little lighter on Thursday because of that. And, uh, you know, they did. They, 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 they played a really good football game, but at the end of the day, we gave them four gifts. And four gifts, I think, maybe three of them on our side of the field, or four of them on our side of the field. And you got to turn those into points. How about Mark Webb's knee? Just catches up on injury. KJ, I think, came out with a shoulder. You mentioned Aaron already, but Webb and yeah, Webb's got, he got, he bumped knees on the, the Linsky kids' knee brace. They went knee to knee on one of those pressures, and uh, the knee brace got him and uh, he's injured. I don't know how serious it is. Uh, we'll check into it. Um, so he was down, and then Cager's got the shoulder, could go, which has been lingering for him. He's got the uh, separated shoulders. He's been dealing with it for weeks, so he just, it's hard to get healthy because he, he, he goes out there and plays. He doesn't, he doesn't bang on it during the week, but he, he goes out there and plays on it. It's just had a hard time getting healthy. You mentioned Solomon. Yeah, his ankle. Re-injured. Well, not re-injured. It's been bothering him. He was trying to push through. Schaefer, Schaefer got uh, injured as well. You, know. you said last year in Baton Rouge that all your goals are still uh, attainable. I, I assume the same holds true. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been a part of a lot of your football teams that have lost a game. And for us, it's really not about – this game anymore, we're going to have to look at the tape and get better. It's about the next game. Because in the SEC, they're all like this. I know that people find it hard to believe that Georgia, the number three rate team in the country, just played a tight gun ball game or played lost to South Carolina. But when you look at it, Kentucky has a good football team too. And everybody we play has good football players. You have got to go out and execute and be able to play at a high level week to week in this conference. And we've got to do that. We've got to help them do it as coaching staff. So team week in, week out, lose in a big manner, get dominated. But to lose in the way you did, is it more frustrating knowing the mistakes that you guys had in terms? I would say it's been just frustrating to lose. I mean, I'm disappointed in the way we performed. Kermit, in, in overtime, they were uh, they had a series where they looked a little confused on offense. When the play clock was running down, you called the timeout. What what were you seeing on your end, like you called timeout there? Which time are you talking about? Mm-hmm. No, they came up out of a speed break huddle on fourth and one. And so what we wanted to do was see what it was, their play to win the game was, to see it and be able to go over and adjust to it. There was not really major confusion. They were trying to get lined up, but we wanted to see what that was. And I also felt like they were going to hard count. And they were going to try to just to draw us off sides. And I felt like there was value in being able to go over that play, because for that play, that down, that could have been the game. If you stop them there on fourth down, we got to come out and you can go go win the game. So that was the thought process there. This is the second week in a row the secondary's given up a long touchdown. How much of a concern is that going forward, especially as other teams kind of take that match somewhere to exploit you? Oh, we're going to get shots all the time. I mean, we, we, people are going to take shots on you. That's, that's part of the game. It's part of the SEC, and they've got good playmakers to do that with. So there will always be teams taking shots. Two more questions. Do you know how close Kyle Campbell is coming back from? Actually, Campbell? I don't know yet. I mean, he, he was out of warming up today, and he's gotten better. He's been able to. Uh, run around in practice, he's just not 100%. That's a, that's a very delicate injury and it's tough to get over. And we're trying to be patient because you don't want to come back early from that injury and uh, turn toes and toes. Matt's back, Kirby really hit the ball well. He did, he punted the ball well. Thank you. Thank you.